So, what did this lemma told us that if we have a rich set, then in polynomial time we can find a realizable set and this will be a small subroutine in our big algorithm. Okay. So, this is our goal to prove and now we are going to prove the, the most technical lemma. Okay. So, what I am going to do, I hope everybody knows this statement. So, I am going to use this space to write down the statement of the lemma so that we can use the other space to write theorems and prove things okay as formally as we can right i already have given you the idea of how the proof goes on so this is just going to be slightly more formal so what is the lemma we are going to prove give me an interval graph k is in natural number and epsilon prime is greater than 0 okay let delta v v g to k satisfying all those properties it's independent and blah blah blah, blah. then there is a p time polynomial time algorithm that finds a set x okay subset vg of cardinality okay such that now for any realizable set z subset of k okay there is a realizable set z prime subset of z Remember what is the definition of real There is an independent set such that labels are same. There is reason why I am not writing it epsilon u lisk for some reason. Of the set of cardinality, how much? 1 minus 2 times epsilon prime in graph induced on 2 times z in the graph induced on. So, if I have just said epsilon, then this is nothing but the epsilon u lisk. But since I added 2, I had to write in terms of this. Now, let me just give you a proof for this theorem once we have this proof so that we can just forget this and we are done with it. Okay, because it will just take two lines from here. Okay, so we have this lemma, we have that lemma, and everything. Then the take writing this proof does not take much time. I will also drop this in a minute. Okay. So, how will we prove our main theorem given all these three things?
if I gave you all this, how will you prove? Yes. So I yes, polynomial time, right? It's p time. Yeah, yes. Okay. Fine. I mean, I never told. Don't use it. So, not directly. First, look. Here it is gamma. S sorry, what this is called gamma or delta? Gamma. So first, because this is the proof. First, given gamma, you make this delta. And it has all this property first, right? Okay. So what you do? So because to apply this, I need to do this, right? So I do this transformation, now, which I have already explained to you, right? One first lemma, right? Independence, right? Label are independence, right? From here, this is like proper coloring, right? Now. You are saying, okay, apply this lemma. Now you say on this, now take this instance, take G, check delta because now we are good and set epsilon equal to epsilon by 2, right? I have, now what happens? It gives me, it gives me a set X with respect to delta, with respect to delta, right? And what is the property that, okay, you give me any independent set of size, any independent set, I will give you an independent set of size 1 minus 2 times epsilon prime. He has set epsilon prime equal to epsilon by 2, so I am going to give you a one, 1 minus epsilon time. Great, then we are happy, right? Because it, if it means it is an, so this x is epsilon u lisk for this, right? For this. And now we proved the theorem before that any epsilon u lisk for this is also an epsilon. This implies epsilon u lisk for this, and we are happy. So it is. There is nothing more. This is why also I try to tell you that. Right? Like, so let's just get rid of the stupid statement from here. Once because let's and let's concentrate on the main thing. Right? Once we have this lemma, then I already told you how to go to this transformation. I apply G with epsilon prime equal to epsilon by two. I get some set x with respect to delta. Now I already proved that anything, but it's with respect to delta. This is nothing but uh, with respect to delta. This is nothing but by our setting, it is epsilon u lisk, right? But any epsilon u lisk with respect to delta is also an epsilon u lisk with respect to gamma, and we are done. Pallavi, you look very confused. Ask. Is there which step did you not get? Huh? Is it okay? Right. Here it is, I first applied my first transformation by making this, so I got delta. Now here I have a choice of setting epsilon prime. So I choose epsilon prime to be equal to epsilon by 2. Like, so in this theorem, epsilon is given, right? So it's my choice. So I choose epsilon by 2, right? right? So it's like when I'm going to prove this, I, so what happens when I'm going to proving this, I'm only able to guarantee that, look, if you give me an epsilon prime, then I cannot guarantee that it will be epsilon away. It could be two man, two epsilon away, right? It could be two epsilon away. So, like for example, if your epsilon prime was one by four, then I can only guarantee half. Like half can go away. You were interested in that at most one fourth of them will go away. Labels will be lost. But I can only guarantee you that half will be lost, right? So, just to take care of that, what you are trying to do? Okay, you gave me an epsilon. And this guy will lose. Okay, so let me set because epsilon prime is in my hand to set. So I set epsilon prime equal to epsilon by two, and I run this algorithm, right? So whatever parameters we take, I can set it accordingly of our needs, and that's all that it is. Okay. So now we will concentrate completely on the proof of this lemma, right? Which is the heart of the whole thing. Okay. Okay.
okay okay so what i've decided that i already have given you overview last time i'm going to write an algorithm okay so that you can see what i'm trying to do right remember what was the, what was the whole idea the whole idea was that i i so what if you recall the whole idea of the algorithm was let me draw here is that if i'm somewhere here i look at all the rich labels okay i look at all the rich so what are the two property r is the rich labels then there is a realizable set that can be found in polytime right that was the idea right this is what we saw if i give you rich r a rich set set of rich labels then you can find a set which realizes this in polynomial time i just now gave an algorithm otherwise what was that otherwise number of poor labels not poor labels poor vertices label with poor okay how many of them were there look a label a vertex a label is a label is called poor if it is labeled on strictly less than k vertices right, or k intervals so total number of poor vertices is how much k square so our idea was that okay fine i am going to construct my set x this is a realizable set s s is put them in all the poor vertices oh let's put them in okay so this is what we wanted to do at every step but then we said okay fine 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 okay now we said look every rich label is not, every poor label is we are fine so basically what our intuition was that look at any step any way all the poor vertices are there all the rich vertices are there like realization is the only problem is when they are like this so we said okay fine i will take all of you i might lose from you but i will take all of you guys okay then we said okay fine so all the poors are great so now we were branching in a way i said okay if from here some people have become poor then i again took you okay so now again we went some some more like rich remained rich so it's like think of this way that i have a rich person i'm taking something away from him something away from him and hoping that sooner or later the guy becomes poor okay i mean it may not happen the guy is too rich right now if you take something from very rich human being i mean i don't want to take names because this is a video it will go on i had an examples right so but our process is in a way it's a very social process that it says look we cannot make a rich person completely poor but we'll make him sufficiently poor at the end okay not completely cannot take him away but still and that was the whole idea of this branching right we said okay let's look at this poor so the intuition was okay in the beginning there are lots of poor labels but still there are only k square poor labels so the the idea of the algorithm is governed by the way i would have constructed my so you gave me s that's you are an adversary right i am trying to mimic the labels of s and i am trying to construct s prime this is how my right my idea is i said okay fine if i am trying to construct s prime already in like so how do i construct s prime oh in the first step all the people which are poor in s okay let's just keep them we are not going to delete them because we have we have anyway put them into x but now that we have put them into x what are where are they oh they are here they are here all are poor, poor labels but among all the poor labels these are the ones which are intersecting with this so where are my other rich labels they are all a independent set right s is an independent set so they are either here or either they are either they are here or they are here right so we said okay let's make some sub routines oh go find your solution here go find your solution here go find your solution here but the point is who will be the rich labels i have no clue right i have no clue which rich which are rich labels okay so i i cannot guess sorry which all the poor labels are intersecting with s this we do not know so i don't even do not even try to guess because this is this would have been guessing but i can't guess this so i said okay here's a clever trick oh for every potential thing i'm going to make a branch they are overlapping these induced subgraphs overlap because look if i consider this and this they are overlapping but i don't care they are different branches right so at any point of time for a particular s certain branches are effective other branches are not effective 
right so it's like your solution is like traversing think of this way so whenever you are branching the intuition in the idea is very whenever you are branching you think your solution is going through a path my solution is going through a subtree that's it my solution is nothing but a subtree of the big tree and that is an intuition that is a extreme high level of intuition is that my solution the way i will view it is a subtree in my big tree so i'm making a big tree of branching solution but in that my solution will live as a subtree not as a path right in general whenever we do branching algorithm we say hey here is a path or oh, look at a solution from here to here though no no no, no sorry let's generalize that to even more higher why it has to be path it can be it can be tree so it's fine it's a subtree so keep that in mind that is something to take away from this is not this will not be given in the paper okay but that's all that it is right visualizing my solution as a subtree of a big tree so i'm creating a big tree really big tree still not too big tree and any solution i can realize as a some small subtree inside this right so for example so for example my solution could be so for example suppose this right so maybe when i chose something i only need to go to this guy and this induce sub and this 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 and this here there are two ways maybe i only need to go here here i need to probably go to both here i only need to go to here and here maybe i would need to go both here i only need to go here and here all the three so this is subtree of my solution right so but there are many other child which i have created so if i fix a solution and i try to trace my tree with respect to that solution i will get a subtree which will tot in totality will give me everything okay that was an intuition okay fine okay so this is called mark interval blah okay okay i should i should forward you the link to the videos please someone should remind me okay ha huh? what no 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 the videos all the videos are online on kaveri you cannot see it from youtube but you can see it it there so the algorithm is is called mark interval right and that will mark interval is mark all this it takes two parameters an h and a d prime okay this is an induced subgraph of g of g and d prime is a natural number this will be like a depth threshold if it is goes more than this then do something first if d prime equal to 1 then return you do nothing it's like you just return empty set in some sense okay it's like no i do not want to do anything okay it's my like what okay next step is let r be the set of rich labels set of r be the set of rich labels in h okay now what we do let r be the set of rich labels in this okay now apply the algorithm described described in lemma to find find a set s that is independent pendant and it's a realizable set right we know how to find such a set right given nd h and this we know how to do this so find this okay mark all the intervals in s okay mark all the intervals in s right whatever s you have got mark those intervals like so i'm just going to mark all the intervals and i'll return you the set of set all all the vertices corresponding to the marked intervals that's my goal okay next let p be the 
set of all intervals which are labeled poor in H. Okay? So there are a set of labels which are poor labeled poor in H. Oh my god, extreme painful. Next is let Q be the set of all endpoints in the intervals in the intervals of P. Okay? So basically all the endpoints of the poor labels, poor intervals, right? Let P be the set of all intervals which are labeled poor in H. And let Q be the set of all endpoints in the intervals of P. So like if these are my poor intervals. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, like this. These are integers, just put them inside this. Like this is how they are marked, left endpoint, right endpoint, so just put them. Okay, and here it is, finally, this is what you do recursively. Seven. For all p comma q in q union zero comma a, and what is zero is the first and a is the last, like end point of the last. Like they, they are in the window zero a, right? All the intervals are in the window zero a. All the intervals are here. So just think of it. Okay. Last endpoint. Why we are writing this? Because this may not be part of this may not be poor, but just include that guy. And zero is the first. Don't get started. Fine. So now we are going to call mark interval on what? It's a recursive procedure, procedure, right? So mark interval where first of all. I'm going to give him one like depth one less and what it is and this is nothing but I will define what this means H Y P K okay where now define let me so this is what I'm going to call my where let me define what this means where Y P Q is a set of intervals I'm using intervals and vertices like interchangeably because in, for interval graphs I can use that. Okay, the set of intervals of H, which is fully contained in the interval p comma q. Just like if I give one in number here, p q all the intervals here, 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 look at the induced graph on this, but excluding p and q. This is what open intervals p comma q means. Whenever I, someone uses open p comma q means p is not included, q is not included. Closed means both p and q are included and this is your algorithm. It's like basically it goes through all endpoints of this, tries all pairs and whichever induced subgraph it can make, go find it, mark it in this end. And this is what it does till whatever the d prime we set it. And that's our algorithm, right? So this is exactly the correct description of the algorithm I described you that day. There's nothing more, right? For every pa pair of this, you define a graph, induce subgraph of this, just go, go. Okay? Now, okay? So what is the vertices corresponding to mark intervals? Vertices corresponding to marked intervals correspond to X. That's point number one. This is what my X is. What is my X? Look, this algorithm wants me to return an X, right? 
So all the marked guy I will return x. Okay. Few things I can prove very easily by setting d appropriately. Okay. Okay. So what do I what do I set d prime to be? I mean, or it takes some d prime, but set. I'm going to call my my call my algorithm on what? On graph g and some d, right? What it takes? Some g. It takes some induced subgraph this. But I'm going to call in the beginning, like I'm going to call my marked interval on which a gra indu graph g, which is an induced subgraph of itself. But what do I set d equal to? Right? So I set d equal to one by epsilon prime ceiling because I need some integer and log 1 over epsilon this is what I said this is what I said and I call this now first let us look at how many intervals will be marked because once I fix this this is easy whether this has the desired properties or not that is an entirely thing how much running time it takes and how much intervals it will mark it is very clear once I fix these two parameters okay am I right okay so now what happens okay how many intervals are we going to mark? Let us see. At any level, how many intervals do you mark? You mark a realizable set and you mark number of poor vertices. So basically, you mark k plus k square people, right? So I only I'm only interested in first bounding the number of marked intervals. So number of marked intervals is suppose it is given by recurrence t of t. Okay. What is t of one? How many intervals do I mark when d is one? T of one is zero. That's great. Okay, okay, because you need base case. Now I am trying to be formal. Otherwise, for d equal to 1 and d greater than equal to 1, what we do? t of d is less than or equal to, first of all, I may be marking k square plus k vertices because of realizability plus because of poorness, right? Okay, what is the size of q? No, size of q, 2k square. So size of q is 2k square. So how many pq can be there in q union 0a, right? For all p comma q, right? Maybe I should say p not equal to q because otherwise it does not make sense, okay? Okay, so how many such intervals are there? Because there's no point. Because this is like, what do I get, right? So I can assume that p is not equal to q. P q not equal to q. Fine, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's like a choosing a two-side subset. So this is nothing but plus, if my understanding is correct, two times k square plus two, choose two. But then, what is my d? I have in decreased the, my d value by one. So t of t of d minus. Do you have any questions, Sanjukta? Please ask. Don't worry. Because there are k square intervals, and they have left endpoint and right endpoint. So I'm like I do not care. I like I take all possible endpoints because we don't know which endpoint is nice for us. Right? Maybe in some sense this side we should be choosing, so then we should take that interval. So just take everything. Because given this, it defines an induced subgraph, which is okay for us. And anyway, since we do not care about asymptotics, let us not care about anything. Okay? It is just a matter of two. Okay? So this is what we did. Now look, and how much this will solve to? If it is, I am not going to do this maths, but this actually solves to something like, okay, 
this recurrence solves to k power big of t right because think of this way right it's a branching tree right so look at this is a branching tree of depth d and branching factor being some k square or k power 4 right the right way to look at this this is nothing but a branching tree of factor k power 4 right this is a job this is the amount of job done at the node but how many nodes are there right one guy create at most k power 4 children and what is the depth of this tree? D. So k power 4D, roughly. Okay. Now at each node, how many things we are marking? Right? K square plus k. So into k square plus k, right? Which is nothing but if I do asymptotics, it is nothing but k to the power big of t. Right? That's all that is happening. That's more cleaner way of looking at them rather than solving this recurrent. What? Which one? No, there is t of d minus 1. Uh -huh. But like when, when I expand this, so I mean if I look at this reference, I know I will get 2 k square plus 2 choose to d many such terms, like 1 power d. Because when I open up t of d minus 1, one, what is t of d minus 1? Uh, it is again some expression of. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So. I, I don't think it's easy for me to see all this. For me, much easier to see that I see the such tree, which has a depth today. I mean, look, these are personal things. Okay. I mean, if you ask me, you know how it's I would so. If you really, if you really want formal proof, then formal proof will be really. If you really want formal proof, I'll tell you how to show up formal proof. Okay. Guess. So t of d is less than or equal to k power alpha d minus beta times k square plus k to get rid of this. Now so, seriously, that is the right way, okay, okay. But is t of 1 equal to 0? Let us put t of 1, uh, d is right. So, d equal to 1, okay, we have to, okay, okay. so we have to choose in a way that t of 1 is equal to 0. So, somehow we have to choose this. Right now, you apply your this thing. My mother, k square plus k. Okay, now. <clears throat> it's painful. It doesn't serve any purpose. Okay, and same is the running time. Right, same is the running time. Right, at each node, there are so many search node, and we are we are we are spending time proportional to the search tree because at each node we are also have to find that set s which realize it so that can be done in polynomial time so if you multiply with some other poly factor that's okay 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 now we need to show the correctness of the algorithm okay actually this is a painful thing but let's prove this so what we are going to do is claim we are going to prove this claim. What? So, so now we have run the run the. Now we need to show it's correct, right? So, what we are going to show? Let H be and induced subgraph of G d prime less than or equal to d element of natural numbers positive integer positive integer and set x prime with a set of realizable vertices no this is not what i want to say Ta -ta -ta. and x prime b the set of marked vertices says 
on h comma d prime okay this is what is it like x prime is the set of marked vertices by h comma d prime if w subset of k right if w subset of k is realizable in h okay if w subset of k is realizable in h means there is some guy which realizes in h then there is w prime subset of it should not be w it should be x prime this is a digit typo okay then there is a subset w prime subset of x prime okay so that is a cold point okay there is a w subset of w prime such that w prime is realizable in h induced on what x prime and look now we forget about the set so i can write cardinal because w is a label set i am only talking that is why i started using the word realizable otherwise set look at this label look at this no let's talk now is 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 minus epsilon prime d prime continuity of w if we prove this we are done right because what then you are happy right because then you will apply this lemma on g comma d right if you apply this lemma on g comma d you will be done because right look look this is let h be induced subgraph of g and d and then on h comma d i give you some x prime then let w if w is realizable in h then there is a w prime which realizes in h induced on x prime w and w prime are set of labels right? no so set of marked vertices in this x prime is set of marked vertices yes w is a subset of x prime okay so this w i mean w is it a set of vertices or set of labels that we think what should it be No, this should be, yeah, it should be W, yeah, and this is what it is, sorry. Right, right, so look what I am saying, if W is realizable in H, then there is a W prime subset of W, right, labels which is also realizable in h 6 prime and its size is large that is it. What is the meaning of this? No, yeah, this is what it says right. So, which is same as saying if in your language you give me s which is independent set gamma s which is realizable look at that here that is w right. For that you had s prime so they look at that label that is your w prime. So, I have just changed the statement around because it is slightly easier to prove but now to prove the theorem all it is necessary to prove this claim because you will apply this with what? To prove the theorem what is what we will apply this to prove this lemma what will you do this? You will apply with g comma d the same claim right. So, now if you have some guy some z subset of k which is realizable which is realizable then what will you do?
you will find another z prime right you will find another z prime right which is realizable in graph induced on x and what is the continuity of z prime 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 minus epsilon prime d prime cardinality of z right this is it right and you can show I am not going to do this okay that this is nothing but you can show this is nothing but greater than or equal to 1 minus 2 epsilon prime this is what it is this is what it is like this is like if you do the maths this is what it is I mean okay you see what you have to show okay, let us do this otherwise you will say that okay I did not do this okay so let us do this maths if if it is interesting at all I do not know how much it is this is what we have to show right this is what you have to show right just one second so one one goes here okay. I have to show that epsilon prime no I know if it goes how does it matter right yeah this is all that I have to show and if you just substitute log properly it should happen like this is the number right it will happen so this is like some simple maths computation which I'm very bad at it and don't expect me to do it okay it's impossible that I will do it and I will succeed in doing it maths under maths MSc maths right maths what are you ready computer science I may say PhD, I mean this is too much, oh, right, you like B maths, MSc maths, maths and computing, okay, okay, you too I cannot say anything, right, so please, if you cannot do this much then I am sorry, let us get to the proof of this, all I am trying to tell you that heart of the proof is this claim. Okay, fine. What will you? How will we go about proving this? Right? How will we go about proving this? Okay. So basically, you prove. There's a reason why I put d prime, right? And whenever you have recursive algorithm, you always try to prove it using the height of the recursion, right? Always. That's the best way to prove it. Okay. So using induction on d prime. So when d prime is 1, what do you return? Right? If d prime is 1, right? When d prime is 1, I am going to return empty set of labels. What? What is the same term now? The base case is what? When d prime is 1. But when d prime is 1, what happens? Let us do this math. If d prime is 1, okay. So let us look at this. What is this? If d prime is 1, 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 minus epsilon prime right right so first let us compute this this is all that I am saying right because d prime is 1 so this is equal to 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 plus epsilon prime this is 0 right so what you want in this d prime, what I am returning? I am returning an empty set. 
this is what I'm written or not. This is not called empty set. This is an empty set. It's a difference between this and this. Oh, I return this. No, isn't the maths man? Isn't there a difference between just returning this and this? There's a difference of axiom of choice. Okay, I don't know, but something should be returned. Okay. So I have returned an, returned an empty set, right? And what do we I need to say? Look, whatever may be the h, basically I do nothing at this point of time. When if you give me h comma 1, then I do nothing. I say, no, I will not return. There's nothing. Okay, now let's prove. If w of subset of k is realizable in h, then there is a w prime subset of this. There's nothing, right? There's nothing. I'm not going to return you anything. So then how are you going to matter? But all you are demanding that whatever w prime I'm returning, which is empty set, I'm not going to realize your any labels. Go to hell. But still, I mean, all I'm saying that what should be the size of whatever object I have returned, right? Le as a label, what should be the size? 1 minus epsilon prime, 1 minus epsilon prime, d prime. And d prime is 1, which is 0. So all you have asked me, return me a 0 size set. Like or realize the 0. So for any, whatever it is, please don't realize me. In other words, all we are saying, because all you are asking me that, oh, you can forget the cardinality of w prime can be 0 times this, right? Then I am saying, please do not realize anything. I am still fine. Now, why is this happening, not happening is a very different question, right? But the, inductively, this is what I am trying to achieve, right? So my base case is perfectly fine. I have returned you an empty set and that's great because you didn't want me to realize anything anyway. For any W, all you said, realize the zero labels from me. Okay, fine. My empty set realizes zero labels of yours, right? This is fine, right? Look, it's very bottom case, right? D is not what this, when D prime is one, then that is okay. So don't, you look very, oh, what is this happening? No, we have set something, right? So when D is in the bottom, that's all that is required. Like there's not, probably there's no W with more than some amount of labels that we cannot forget him. That's the point, right? In the bottom, there is no guy with more than two, two epsilon labels anyway. Basically what it says is that every set had at most two, 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 point two epsilon prime labels left, strictly less than that or greater, less than or equal to this. Then I don't have to realize anybody, right? This is exactly what the base case means, right? When d prime is one, then every set which is independent has how many labels? At most two times epsilon prime label or even less, I don't know. Because that must, I can, I'm allowed to be forgotten. Okay, and this is why minus and this, like these are like very well thought out equations here. Okay, so this is fine for the base case. So for the induction step, let's assume that this holds, suppose claim is true for, true for, strictly less than 1, greater than or equal to 1, d prime. Claim is true for all d prime, which is greater than or equal to 1, but strictly less than d prime. This is what we are going to prove, okay? But this is true because this is, so we assume that for all d double prime, which is strictly less than d prime, the statement holds. Okay, now, now let's, okay, so now W is given to me, okay, now we will have cases based on how W looks like. If 1 minus epsilon times, if 1 minus epsilon cardinality of W labels in W, are rich. If this is rich, right? If 1 minus epsilon time mod w labels in w are rich, 
so many labels are rich. Then what are we doing in this step? Apply the algorithm in this and find a set S that is independent and delta of S equal to R, right? So what we can do? We can definitely realize, realize how, who? W intersection, W, no, uh, R rich, W intersection R can be realized, right? Can be realized, right? Because everybody in rich can be realized. So in particular, W intersection rich can be realized because look at the set which realizes all the rich labels, throw away all the labels which are not in W. That has realized W intersection R. But W intersection R realizes lots of labor. It's like 1 minus epsilon prime labels of W are rich. I will say, let's not go down because there are too many of them are rich labels. So we are happy, okay? Why? Because 1 minus epsilon prime, this is where the maths comes in, cardinality of W, right? These many rich labels are there. What is its size? This is greater than or equal to, because we know that we can realize this much in labels. All I need to show that this is greater than or equal to how much? 1 minus epsilon prime, whatever this is, right? This is 1 minus epsilon prime W is greater than or equal to definitely 1 minus epsilon prime, 1 minus epsilon prime, what is this? D prime continuity of W, right? Look, I'm only subtracting something, man. No? So, 1 minus the sum number, I'm 1 minus some number and more some number, right? So, this is perfectly fine, right? So, this is done. So, if there are a lot of rich labels, then I don't even go down. We said, okay, fine. I don't have to do any induction or something. I'm like the, this step when I'm adding all the all the rich labels realizable set, that takes care of all the set W which contains lots of rich labels. That is done. So we have to only worry about those set W which contains not too many rich labels, right? For that we have to worry about it, right? That is all that we have to worry about it, okay? Okay. But what happens at this point of time? How many poor labels are there? Huh? No. How, but on W, if this case does not occur, then in W, how many labels are poor? Huh? At least epsilon prime time W labels are poor. Okay? And that is what we are going to exploit. Do you realize? So this is what I'm saying. Look. If this does not happen, so whatever you set are, you, you are containing <laughs> sufficiently many poor, lab, poor, poor labels, right? And we will exploit that fact. It's like the threshold where rich and poor goes is what you have to choose appropriately. Okay, fine. What should I drop? I, I, is this algorithm, will you remember? Or should I, I, I'll just rub this part, okay? And I leave this algorithm because maybe we will have to go back and Okay, this is the step five, we did this, step six, we did this. And just remember this so that, okay? okay so let's rub this because statement is fine. We know we have to prove two times epsilon. Okay, so now we are in the case and then the maths will start kicking in. Okay, of course, I mean, it's not easy, but it's still, okay? So, case number of rich labels are less than strictly less than 1 minus epsilon prime w right this implies number of poor labels is at least epsilon prime time w right this implies this because every label is either rich or poor so if there are so less, less rich labels, there are so many poor labels. Okay. Okay, now let's go back, let's go in the picture. Let U be the independent set. Now we need such that, we were using delta, right? 
what we using delta because now I need to go to the independent set okay to create my problem instances right. So, if w is a realizable it means there is some u independent set. So, w delta of u equal to w in h because we are always talking in h right we are always talking in h okay. And let u p u p is poor be the set of vertices the set of vertices that have been labeled poor in u. So, I have set u and if you look at the realization set what is this it is w and there are guys which are up these are labeled poor. So, this is vertex set this is label set ok. So, let us keep this distinction vertex set label set their labels is exactly equal to w right up like so the reason why we chose this way so that to avoid unnecessary using this that this that label so I mean but at some point of time you need to do this ok fine. And another thing to note could be can I say this if the labels are at least epsilon time w then the vertices has to be more than epsilon w. Look label I mean their image is less and it is an injective function. Okay. So, now what I am going to do let a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 a p b p ok a sorry a l b l be intervals in u p poor inter such that Okay. Look, they are independent set, right? So I first guy a1 b1, it's independent. So does it intersect? So the next guy must start after the first guy. So a2. So I can have this order because up is an independent set. So it's like so I like okay. This is a1 b1. This is a2 b2. Let me satisfy this. Agreed? What is u? What is u? Is an independent set. What is up? Is a subset of this. You look very confused by Vertices, but what was u which realizes w? So, u is an independent set, let u be the independent set so that and u p is a subset of that is a vertex set. u p is those vertices which are labeled poor. So, that is an independent set, right? No, it is in u that is why I am calling it u underscore p right otherwise I would have called p let p be the set of all intervals which are labeled poor this is part of p. So, this is why you draw the picture right this is u which realizes w and this is the all the guys which are poor here and this, like this is very natural. So, now what I will tell you great ok. So, now this is what I meant that look at the branching tree. So, what the branching tree will say ok I will say ok fine let us look at the branching tree which is here. 0 comma a 1 a 1 b 1 is the interval. So, of course, not next here b 1 comma a 2 fine we have such a such a child right because for every pair we had a child every poor people we had a child. So, we had a child with 0 a 1 b 1 a 2 ok fine fine ok I also ok yeah any anything between b 1 a 2 a 2 b 2 I do not care because that is an edge ok b 2 
a3 and dot 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 right and last will be how much bl and a because 0 a we have made right and what do you know about this all these intervals are disjoint from these intervals all these intervals are disjoint from these intervals because together they are independent set and where they are lying they are lying either here either in this induced subgraph which we made or this induced subgraph we made or this induced subgraph we made or with this induced subgraph we made we were smart people so we made so now you had you made all possible children but now you are you once you fix this only some so imagine that suddenly some subtrees are vanished some things are there some subtrees are vanished some subtrees are vanished so finally you have a solution subtree which is realizing things okay what look look at this what did i do here for all pq in q in 0 1 mark interval hq pq right so now i want to i have decided which are my poor labels are so look at the graph 0 a1 look at the graph b1 a2 look at the graph b2 a3 these are induce subgraph which are disjoint because the interval which is completely contained inside this side is not going to be inside this side right that is by definition of this look at the, this different induced subgraphs where are the other vertices of u r they are distributed some are here some are here some are here and some are here right think of your graph okay i am going to rub this okay we will get there i mean this is not something okay. right so look what was our recursive procedure was doing it was branching in several for every tuple of poor guys it was branching now i'm saying look if you have a solution u look at let's look at u what is this you use some this is my this is my u it's only u there are many more intervals interleaving but this is what my u is okay look at my poor guys so what i'm saying let's look at this side this is my one induced subgraph let us look at one induced subgraph which is this so what is my tuple which i am creating i say okay 0 a1 it's because this is a1 this is a, this is a1 b1 this is a2 b2 and this is say al bl so i say okay look at the first thing which i create here 0 a1 right look at the induced subgraph of 0 a1 it is some graph here look at the induced subgraph on b1 a2 this is in some subgraph here look at the induced subgraph between b2 and al there is some sub induced subgraph here look at the induced subgraph after bl and a right that is another similar subgraph now these independent set are completely contained inside here because they all are independent set so they this guy is contained inside here this guy is maybe something else is contained inside here so they are getting distributed across right so this is what this is what these intervals mean so now when i was looking at this for every tuple i made branch so in particular i also made branches for this tuple so let's forget every other branches which were going just forget them they do not exist anymore because now we are trying to traverse this tree and say where are our solutions are right so in the first case we have picked up all these guys because they all were poor so remember look at this mark all the intervals in let p be the set of all intervals which are labeled poor in h i do not mark no no i should also be marking poor levels okay this is what right come on this is as well as mark them Okay. 
okay so i have always that marked so i always so that you otherwise, otherwise why we got k square there right so we are marking all poor labels poor vertices and this so clearly we have marked this set right right clearly we have marked this so now think of this way that you are trying to as a realization set for your u you are trying to create a set which consists of all these three guys and maybe some more right so it's like you say that okay fine this is my u which i want trying to get an approximation to i'm going to contain all of up but all other are rich guys we don't know but we say okay this set of vertices which are independent here they are going to lie in this part of my independent set this part sorry this that some subset of independent set is going to lie here some subset of independent set is going to, but look they distribute every vertex which is rich and in the independent set they only go to one they do not intersect at all like they completely disjoint and this is what we are going to use it because now i can distribute the sum on each of these guys like if i had say more 10000 vertices left here to cover i say maybe out of those 10000 wait here so suppose out of 10000 800 went here then i am only need to have an approximation with respect to 800 here because when i take the union of all this that's still good right so what you have done you had a, a big global thing but now you have locally said you i don't care like this guy and this guy doesn't have to bother you take your portion of independence go find your solution you go find your solution and we can actually put them together and that will be great and that's all that we are doing okay is that okay fine okay right and what we know so now by induction hypothesis right by induction hypothesis what we will do is that suppose let's call this v0 let's call this vertex set v1 and let's call this vl okay okay now let's let's look at v0 intersection w there are some labels right let's look at v1 int i mean what is this v what is this v0 wait wait so no no so what i am saying this is not correct so what i am saying v0 is is that look at your u okay look at your u here u intersection this part of the graph let's call it v0 right intersection of u which is goes here intersection of u which goes here is v1 vl so what i want to do is that look this set is realizable here because look this independent set is realizable with some labels right by induction hypothesis i will find a set with some property right look now when i call this i decrease d by 1 by induction hypothesis any set which is realizable here right i should be able to give you another w prime which realizes this with some properties this is what it is right no what was the induction hypothesis that look at this graph any anything which is realizable it means look at the color set of this guy right look at the label set of look at the delta of v0 here right let's call that w1 okay let's call it label set of v1 let's call this let's call this w0 w1 let's call this wl minus 1 and let's call this i'm drawing picture sorry wl right but these are realizable because you have taken its intersection so by definition they are realizable and what is the property of each wi union of w i w j j going from 0 to l is equal to u minus up this is exactly what it is right u minus remove the all the pure. so all this, this is what i meant by these guys have distributed the vertices of u have distributed so no what 
vj is equal to u minus ub. j equal to 0 to l, not the labels, but the vertex sets. This is, this is fine. Okay. So now by induction hypothesis, I will now by induction hypothesis, each of the each of the w zeros to w l minus 1 are realizable with some properties. Right? And what is that? What is this? Okay. So now by our construction, okay, by our construction, what is realizable? Right? So suppose by induction hypothesis w0 is realizable by w0 prime. Right? It is realizable by w0 prime. This is realizable by w1 prime by induction hypothesis. And this is in this induced subgraph it is realizable. W L minus 1 prime, W L prime. In this induced subgraph by induction hypothesis, this W i is realizable by this label sets. These label sets. That's what. Look, with W for W0 is a label set. I can find an independent set whose label set is W0 prime, and the size of W0 prime is very close to W0. Right? Whatever that close means, we have defined what close meant. We will come back in the definition. This. But what is the beautiful thing? What all sets are realizable? What are the labels are realizable? The la labels which are realizable. So total number of total number of labels that are realizable that are realizable are all the labels on the poor guys are realizable. Right? And union. Big union i equal to 0 to l, w i are realizable. Right? All these labels are realizable because they are separate and these guys we have realized. So you found an independent set here, you find an independent set here, you take their independent. Still, there is an independent set, and by our construction, they are independent from the poor level. So total thing is an independent set. Now, what is the size of this realizable set? That is what we have to see that we have got our bound appropriately. Okay, and that's what we'll do in next five minutes. Okay, now we don't need this algorithm, so I'm going to drop this. Yes, Sanjukta. Okay. As I told you, now if you go and read this section, it's much easier to read it. Look, we have not yet seen its applications. Not, not a single one. Well, like we build whole mountain and what the hell we use for, right? I mean, and to be honest with you, if I actually, I will give you a disjoint factor and I will bring you to the place for cycle packing where you can use it, but still, I will leave you to have a fun because I will teach you till the last because on the way I will introduce at least 10 to 12 new techniques which you should know, like not techniques, tricks which we use whenever we deal with this, like lowest common ancestor, this trick, that trick. So I'll trick teach you all those tricks, but finally when the math will come, I'll let you be. I'll say, I will, I will not do that, okay? But for destroying factor, I'll do it completely. Okay. Look, I'm very poor with, with maths, okay? So, This is what it is, right? Right? So, this is what we have to be. Look, all these things are realizable, right? But we are only getting W1 prime, W0 prime, right? So, we have to see that this size is not too small compared to this size. That's our goal. Agreed? All these are realizable, right? Because this is nothing but your S, this is nothing but your U. Right? But what we are realizing is this. So anything which you gave me independent from here, independent from here, I can put them together and then I'm fine. That's a great thing. Okay, so this is greater than or equal to delta times up plus summation equal to i to 0 to l. And what is this? With respect to wi, what it was? 1 minus epsilon prime plus, oh, sorry, minus 1 minus epsilon prime, d prime minus 1 by induction hypothesis times 
wi. This is what it was, right? This is what the property of wi prime is. So this is exactly what I wrote for you. <sighs> okay, this is exactly equal to delta up plus what I'm going to do is look at this number. This is same in everywhere, right? This number is same everywhere, right? So I can write this as 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 minus epsilon prime d prime minus 1 summation i equal to 0 to L w i. Agreed? Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. And this is equal to my God, how did we do this? God bless me. Really, God bless me if I get this correct. Okay. But what is this wi? It's nothing but w minus delta of up. Right? Delta was their label set. Remove the labels which are used on up, right? This is exactly what wi is, summation of wi. Agreed? Yeah, but what is the what is u minus up is nothing but summation of union union of wi. So this is fine. Okay, so this is okay. Plus, I'm doing like plus a minus a to do some computation. W minus minus like I plus added this and I subtracted this. Agree? Is this okay? It's equality. Look, I added this term and I subtracted this term and I have just summed them up. There's nothing, I have not done any, but this is greater than or equal to Okay, what is this greater than or equal to? Look, this plus this is nothing but cardinality of delta w. This term and this term is nothing but cardinality of w. So maybe it helps to, it seems it helps w. Okay, so this term and this term we have merged. Now, if you look, there is a w minus this and w minus this here. So I would like to talk, take out this common, okay? I would like to take out this common. So if I take minus common, then everything will become minus one plus epsilon prime, right? Plus one minus epsilon prime, eps yeah, epsilon prime d prime minus one plus one. And what is this? W minus delta times up. Am I right? So minus 1 plus 1 will go away. Something went away. Yaar. Come on. <laughs> After all this hard work, some people went away. This is like this is like such a torture. Ethic, is this correct? Is this correct? Right? This is correct, right? Now, what should I do? Okay, so look at this. This is definitely greater than or equal to if I do W minus epsilon times W. plus, just one second, is this correct, right? Look, you were subtracting epsilon time some small quantity, I am subtracting slightly larger quantity and I am keeping everything same. What? 
sorry is it correct fine okay okay fine yeah but he is right why not just do the same thing here and i think then we will be done right right okay fine so what the hell did we achieve from this oh at least we got w prime can be taken common no okay so what we get 1 minus epsilon prime minus 1 minus epsilon prime no look there is something we are not doing correctly here this is correct right no so what I want to do this is from here to here okay here to here I will do something funky okay I will do something slightly more funky here okay where is my duster let us see something very nice happens here okay this is okay so I do not want to what I want to say this is where we use the fact w minus w minus delta time u p is how much is less than equal to is less than equal to this is rich people rich labels rich labels is strictly bounded by this look what is the case number of rich labels is less than 1 minus epsilon prime w this is why we are doing all this so we should use somewhere right so this is the time we are going to do what is this is less than equal to this so now if i do this then this is not this this is w like i got rid of minus 1 please don't send messages i hate especially when I am teaching okay fine right and now I think we are done okay okay so formalism takes so much to formalize you understand Let us close it here. Okay, sir, let us stop it.